Hosanna to the Son of David, the King of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Give praise to the Lord for he is good. His mercy endures forever. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, a marvel in our eyes. Hosanna, Vilio David, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine domini, rex Israel. Hosanna in excelsis. Go forward in procession with branches, as far as the horns of the altar. You are my God, I praise you. My God, I exalt you. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Hosanna to the Son of David, the King of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The glory of these forty days we celebrate with songs of praise for Christ through whom all things were made. Himself has fasted and has prayed. Alone and fasting, Moses saw the loving God who gave the law, and to Elijah fasting came the steeds and chariots of a flame. So Daniel trained his mystic sight, delivered from the lion's might, and John the bridegroom's friend became the herald of Messiah's name. Then grant, O God, that we may to return in a fast and a prayer to you, our spirit strengthen with your grace, and give us joy to see your face. We begin this celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. 
Dear friends, we hold palms, branches today, recalling Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, the holy city. It is a bittersweet remembrance because we know that no sooner had he celebrated the Passover meal with his disciples than he was arrested, tried, convicted, and put, put to death. But Jerusalem is more than the site of his crucifixion. It is also the site of his resurrection. As we begin this holy week, let us pray that through his sacrifice, we all hope to one day reach the eternal Jerusalem. Lord Jesus, in your dying you revealed the immensity of the Father's love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, in your passion and death you emptied yourself for our Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, in your resurrection you have been given the name that is above every other name. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who was an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may hear his lesson of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
dogs have surrounded me. A band of the wicked besets me. They tear holes in my hands and feet. I can count every one of my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my clothing among them. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. With your spirit, 
the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. To Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. The elders of the people, chief priests and scribes, arose and brought him before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, We found this man misleading our people. He opposes the payment of taxes to Caesar and maintains that he is the Christ, a king. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. Pilate then addressed the chief priest and the crowds. I find this man not guilty. But they were adamant and said, He is inciting the people with his teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began even to hear. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean, and upon learning that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been wanting to see him for a long time, for he had heard about him and had been hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at length, but he gave him no answer. The chief priests and scribes, meanwhile, stood by, accusing him harshly. Herod and his soldiers treated him contemptuously and mocked him, and after clothing him in resplendent garb, he sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that very day, even though they had been enemies formerly. Pilate then summoned the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought this man to me and accused him of inciting the people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation in your presence and have not found this man guilty of the charges you have brought against him, nor did Herod for he sent him back to us. So no capital crime has been committed by him. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. But all together they shouted out, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us! Now Barabbas had been imprisoned for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Again, Pilate addressed them, still wishing to release Jesus, but they continued their shouting. Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate addressed them a third time. What evil has this man done? I found him guilty of no capital crime. Therefore I shall have him flogged and then release him. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been imprisoned for rebellion and murder, for whom they had asked, and he handed Jesus over to them to deal with as they wished. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country. And after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourself and for your children. For indeed the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. At that time people will say to the mountains, Fall upon us, and to the hills, cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right and the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, this is the king of the Jews. 
Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, in your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, This man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for the spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances stood at a distance, including the women who had followed him from Galilee and saw these events. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, as you spiritually and virtually participate in this Palm Sunday Mass from your homes, due to the isolation caused by COVID-19. You might feel missing the important moments of faith in our lives these days. Yes, we do miss you in the pews, as well as you miss not being present in your favorite worship place, standing with palms in your hands, and sitting in your favorite seat in your church. We want to assure you that you and your intentions are part of this celebration. The church celebrates today Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday. It is on Palm Sunday that we end our Holy Week, welcoming Jesus into our lives, asking him to allow us to share in his suffering, death and resurrection. This is also the time of year we stop to remember the events which brought about our redemption and salvation. On the beginning of this holy week, we see Jesus being mocked, tortured, hurt, ridiculed, beaten, and killed. We notice his fear in the Garden of Gethsemane and his willingness to go to the end for what he believes in and sees as his mission in life. We see him on the cross when he seems to feel neglected by his father. Maybe we can identify with him in the fears we have of the present coronavirus and when we wonder where is God in all of it. As Jesus passed over from death to life, this week gives us hope that we too will experience the Passover from this pandemic COVID-19. What else do we see in the passion of Jesus? We see the shame and humiliation he endured. Anyone can face similar humiliation and shame, but what makes the humiliation of Jesus luminous in the dark is the immense love 
with which he responded to his tormentors. No one has ever loved more than Jesus. No one can ever love us as much as Jesus has loved us. This week is holy not because of the shame and humiliation that Jesus endured. Rather, God filled this week with his infinite love. Only love can sanctify our lives. Though we pray and desire for this kind of love, we all struggle to earn it and share it. When we are faced with a similar situation, our response is anger and revenge. Let us learn from Jesus. His generosity is marvelous. His dignity in suffering is awesome. Life offers a lot of pain, tragedy, betrayals from friends, suffering, hopelessness, devastation, misunderstandings, and what not. This week, we can bring those wounds to Jesus and fervently pray for the grace to trust and love. Holiness is a fruit of our endurance and love. In Passion Narratives, we hear Jesus telling us, just like I passed over from death to life, from cross to resurrection, from Good Friday to Easter Sunday, you have to pass over. So you put to death your selfishness, envy, jealousy, lies, sins, and pass over to love, mercy, compassion, goodness, and forgiveness. How will we use this Holy Week while we are confined in our homes? Will we be attentive to the holy hunger that this Holy Week will induce in us? Hunger for the Eucharist, hunger for our community, hunger to be fed by God. Imagine the joy when we are able to gather around the table of the Lord in the ways that we are so used to. In the meantime, listen to your longing for running streams, and let it speak to your heart about your deep desire for what only God can give in your life. In the midst of this challenge, let us recall one of the most well-known quotes of Saint Padre Pio, pray, hope, and don't worry. Let us pray for all those affected by this COVID-19. Let us pray for all those who care for the sick by sacrificing their own lives. Let us hope in God's ability to be near to us and lead us through it and heal us. And let us turn our worries into prayer, our anxieties into faith, handing them over to Jesus who gave his life for our sake. As Jesus receives a king's welcome to his city, the crowd pulls branches from the trees and carpets his path with them as they shout, Hosanna, Hosanna. How quickly the cries of Hosanna turn to crucify him, crucify him. In this holy week, we experience the highest and lowest of human emotions, from victory to betrayal, from love to hate, from courage to fear, they are all there. May our reflections on the sufferings and death of Jesus make us true participants in the events and not just viewers in the life episode of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, begot and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as Jesus enters victoriously into Jerusalem to do his Father's will, we turn united with our crucified Savior to the Father. For the church, that we may sing hosannas to the Lord, giving witness to our faith and to our joy in Christ's saving act. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For an end to relig religious persecution worldwide, that all people everywhere may have the freedom to worship without fear. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been imprisoned and condemned to death, that they may know the infinite saving mercy of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who were to be baptized and received into the church, that their celebration of the Holy Week may bring them ever closer to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our families, neighborhoods, and workplaces who feel abandoned or forsaken, <coughs> and all those in our country and around the world who are sick and suffering due to the coronavirus illness, that they may feel the Lord's tender presence throughout the compassionate outreach of others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the Christians throughout the world, that they may live this Holy Week with special reverence, giving self-giving and devotion, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of our parish community and all the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our Mass today is offered for the repose of Alma Berger, Mrs. Michael Stilisano, and for birthday blessings for Sherry Barber. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Merciful Father, by the Holy Cross, your Son has redeemed the world. Help us to take up his cross and to be united to Jesus in his passion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. cry, lend thine ear unto my prayer, for thou hast ever been my fort and shield, and thou shalt tremble upon the dread enemy. Let me dwell with thee, Lord, forevermore with thee. Me, O Lord, within thy wings. Lord, not my 
my tower of strength. Lord, I will seek thee early. My soul thirsteth after thee, and my flesh longeth after And a thirsty barren land where is no water. And thus will I glorify and bless thee and lift my hands in prayer and in adoration singing thy praises Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, Yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we too acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name, who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, 
broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from me for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me we proclaim your death o lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Graciously listen to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are placed into you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us 
this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of God's peace. of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Father, if this cup cannot pass away unless I drink it, Thy will be done. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you far from saving me, so far from my words of anguish? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Father, if this cup cannot pass away unless I drink it, thy will be done. Lord, who at your first Eucharist did pray that all your church might be forever one, help us at every Eucharist to say with a longing heart and soul, your will be done. Thus may we, all one 
bread one a body be. Through this blessed sacrament of unity, for all your church, O Lord, we intercede. O make our lack of charity to cease. Draw us the nearer each to each we plead by drawing all to you, O Prince of Peace. Thus may we all one bread, one body be. Through this blessed sacrament of unity. So, Lord, at length, when the sacraments shall cease, may we be one with all your church above. One with your saints in one unbroken peace. One with your saints in one unabounded love. More blessed still in peace and love to be. One with the Trinity in unity. Ave Regina Celorum, Ave Domina Angelorum, Salve radix, salve porta, ex que mundo lux est orta. Gaude virgo gloriosa, super omnes speciosa. Vale o valde decora, et pro nobis Christum exora. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the weaker and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Deep within, I will plant my love, not on stone, but in your heart. Follow me, I will bring you back, you will be my own. 
and I will be your God. I will give you a new heart, a new spirit within you, for I will be plant my love, not on stone, but in your heart. Follow me, I will bring you back. You will be my own, and I will be your God. my face and see your God, for I will be your home. Deep within, I will plant my Lord, not on stone but in your heart. Follow me, I will bring you back. You will be my own, and I will be your God. Return to me, with all your heart, and I will bring you back. Deep within, I will plant my love, not on stone, but in your heart. And I will be